हेलो एंड वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल सो फ्रॉम दिस लेक्चर वी विल स्टार्ट अवर हैंड्स ऑन ऑन जेपलिन सो इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव सीन ऑल अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्टरी पार्ट ऑफ जेपलिन वेर वी हैव सीन वॉट इज जेपलिन वाई इट इज यूज एंड इट्स बेसिक फीचर्स सो इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू क्रिएट अ जेपलिंग नोटबुक टू डू सम एनालिटिक्स ऑन टॉप ऑफ अवर डेटा सो वी हैव द फ्रेंड्स डॉट सी एस वी फाइल विच कंटेंट्स द नेम एज एंड द नंबर ऑफ फ्रेंड्स दैट पर्टिकुलर यूजर हैज so that data we have it on our github repository so we we are going to download that data and put it on hdfs and then run our spark code directly from the zeppelin notebook and you will see the power of zeppelin and how it makes the analytics way more interactive and in easier manner so you don't need to set up anything because zeppelin is already pre configured and installed in our hdb sandbox so all you have to do is just kick off your hdb sandbox and make sure all the services are running fine without any issues so the next step would be just go to your favorite browser and instead of localhost 8080 you have to do is localhost 9995 so this is the port for your zeppelin notebook so if you hit enter and as you can see this is the home page for zeppelin and from here you can select your interpreter as well as create the notebooks without any configurations so without wasting any time just we'll create a new notebook and we'll give it as spark dash zeppelin because we are going to run spark code in this notebook and the default interpreter so as you can see we have the angular jdbc md shell script so we'll select spark 2 as a default interpreter so we'll just create the note now and that's it this is how the notebook will look like so this could be like a document so if you have to save some notes then you can give like dollar sign md so it will act as a drop down and you can give some name to it so we will just give like the hashtags so three tags and we'll give like this is our first notebook and if you hit shift and enter so as you can see this is the title of your document and this is how you can well document your code so that it will be easier for you or anyone else for the reference so first step would be we have to download our friends.csv file from the github repository so for that you already know we have to use the shell commands and you can use the shell commands from here as well you don't need to go to the putty to execute shell commands so all you have to do is to let zeppelin know that you are running shell commands just give like percent and give like sh that's it and from the next line you can execute your common shell script commands so you already know we have to use the wget command so give like wget https colon slash slash raw dot github user content dot com slash ashay patel 11 slash hadoop slash main slash friends dot csv and give like dash o so we are going to save this file to the zeppelin home so the path is give dash home dash zeppelin dash friends dot csv so this is the home path for zeppelin notebook and on the next line we can just give the echo command to ensure that the process has been completed so we'll just give like completed so if everything looks good give like shift enter and that's it our file has been downloaded and we got the message as completed so the next step would be we have to make a directory in our sdfs and put this file from the zeppelin home to the sdfs by using the put command or copy from local command whatever it is so the first step would be we have to make the directory in sdfs so all you have to do is hadoop fs and give like mkdir and we'll give the temp slash and we'll create a directory as zeppelin underscore spark so we'll be using this to put our friends.csv file which you have downloaded in the zeppelin home and we and on the next line we have to copy that file from the zeppelin to this zeppelin_spark which is on hdfs so all you have to do is hadoop fs dash put command and we are going to copy it from home zeppelin slash friends.csv and give like temp dash zeppelin_spark dash slash friends dot csv that's it if everything looks good give shift enter so this will take some time as it is communicating with our hadoop cluster and that's it 
our file has been copied to the HDFS now. All we can do is we'll start the Spark code to do some analytics on top of this friends.csv. So let me show you how this file looks like. How this file looks like. So this is our friends.csv file which we have just downloaded from the GitHub repository. So it has the user ID, then the username, then we have the age of that user and the number of friends that user have. So this is pretty simple and straightforward file and it's a comma separated but as you can see it doesn't have any header. So if we don't have any header then while running the spark code we have to define the schema first and pass it while creating the data frame. Because in this tutorial we are going to create a data frame on top of csv file. Because this file does have a structure. So it makes sense to create a data frame instead of rdd. So without wasting any time just head back to Zeppelin notebook and in this third paragraph we are going to create the spark code written in python. So to do that all you have to do is give percent sign and type like pyspark so that you can write your code in python instead of scala because spark originally designed to be worked with scala. But for this lecture for simplicity purpose let's focus on pyspark instead. So after that the first step would be so you have to remember that you don't need to create a spark session or import any libraries because it is pre-configured with zeppelin and it's well integrated with spark as well as we have discussed in the previous lecture so you can directly create your data frame without any issues so before creating a data frame you already know that your csv file has four columns so you have to define schema with it so to define a schema I hope you know the struct type function as well as the struct field function to define the schema. So if not, I'll recommend you to watch our previous lectures where we have discussed all about Spark data frame in detail. So I'll just give this name as my schema equals to the struct type which will assign the schema for our CSV file. In this square brackets, you can give all the four fields. So the first field is that just give like struct field in brackets give like user id. So this will be our first column which has the integer data type integer type. So you have to look out for the capitalization here otherwise it will throw an error and it's true. So it will tell us that it is nullable or not. So in this case we'll give it as true. Again in the next line just copy it and as we have four columns just so our next column would be name which has the string type the age which has the integer type and the last one is the number of friends so we'll give it as friends which again is a integer type and it's also nullable so that's it we have defined our schema successfully so on the next line we can just create our data frame so we'll create a data frame as uh, people let's say people equal to spark dot read so it is reading the file dot format so in the format we have to pass it as csv as you already know that the friends dot csv is, is a comma separated file so i'll use the backslash to go to the next line dot schema so here we have to pass the schema so schema is nothing but my schema on the next line give like dot option so in the option we can pass the path for that particular file so in the option give like the argument which is path so we are passing the path argument here and give the path name so the path is nothing but hdfs colon slash slash triple slash and the path for our hdfs file which is nothing but temp slash zeppelin spark zeppelin underscore spark slash friends dot csv so this is our file and the last one is load so we'll give like dot load so it will load that file and create a data frame named people on top of it so once we got the data frame we can just print its schema to get the metadata of our data frame so we'll just give like people dot print schema so this is capital so this will give the metadata of our data frame then on the next line we can give some transformation to this file so let's say we have the output data frame which will be equal to so people dot select so we are selecting particular columns from this data frame so we'll select people dot user id comma 
people.name and people.friends so for this example we don't need the age of that particular user so we'll just select these three columns now and on the next line we can give like dot where condition so where the people.friends is greater than 30 so it will give us all the users who has number of friends greater than 30 and we'll also give the dot order by to sort the data as needed so we'll order by on people dot friends so this is our output data frame so what we can do is we can also use spark sql on top of this data frame to let you know the possibility of zeppelin notebook so all you can do is we can just create a temporary view now on top of this data frame so output dot create or replace temp view so it will create a view temporary view on top of this data frame and we'll call it as peoples okay so all you can do is using the spark.sql we can submit sql queries on top of this data frame all you can do is give like spark.sql and in brackets submit your command so we'll just for this example let's only select few rows from this database so we'll give like select star from peoples limit um, maybe 20 yeah and we'll give like show method to display the result on the console so this is our spark script so it is pretty simple it is creating a schema for our friends.csv file then it is creating a data frame and we have just filtered out some data so we have we are getting all the users the whose number of friends are greater than 30 so it is pretty straightforward and then we have created a temporary view and submitted a spark sql query on top of that data frame so if everything looks good you can just give like shift enter to execute this paragraph so as you can see it only took two seconds to get completed as you can see we got the schema as we have given the print schema so we have the user id name age and friends and it has the data types as mentioned in our schema and we got like all the users who has friends greater than 30 and we also got only 20 result and in the 20 results sorted by on the basis of the number of friends so it is pretty straightforward example and it was just to get you know how zeppelin may be way more efficient for data scientists and it saves a lot of time so you don't need to worry about creating a spark context or submit it through the command line as well as do some configurations so it is pretty simple and zeppelin is greatly integrated with spark and it also supports many other interpreters so you can work with cassandra or hive as well as edgebase so the possibilities are endless so i'll recommend you to practice it on your own with some simple examples or you can go a little bit deep and try out other services as well and see how it well integrates and you can also let me in the comments if you face any issues or else if you want me to make some other advanced tutorial on zeppelin that also you can mention in the comments and i'm definitely gonna work on it so i hope you got a clear understanding how you can create notebooks in zeppelin and how you can create different commands like shell scripts or PySpark script without any hassle. All you have to do is just mention the percent sign and the language you are going to use. So once everything is done, don't forget to shut off your HDB sandbox to avoid any errors in future. So just go to the machine and go to ACPI shutdown. I hope you like this lecture. So please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates. And don't forget to follow us on our social media which I have linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.